Good morning, everyone. God is good. Amen. Amen. Sarah, this is my gorgeous wife. I bless New Zealand for my wife. Amen. Good morning. I know just most of the young people are still in bed. <laughs> just joking. It's great to be here. It's an honor and a privilege to be speaking in my homeland. We don't get here very often. We try to get here once a year. And it's generally family time, so it's amazing and privilege to be able to sow into a country that is so needing God, that we've stepped so far away from from just the kingdom, the rule and reign of what God has for us, and yet there's a remnant of people that are starving. We are so hungry and so radical to go after the things of God, and I just I just know and sense that I can actually smell. God's up to something. I can, I just, everything within me rejoices every time we touch down is going, what's happening in New Zealand? And, and the words that have been spoken over New Zealand, even in the past couple of months, good friends of ours have been out here from America and you just, you just, God is resounding New Zealand in his heartbeat. He is looking for people to stand up and take a hold of what he's given us. Amen. And it's just an honor and privilege. Thank you so much for having us. And we're excited to see what God's going to do in the next couple of days. Hold on to your seats. Don't put your seat belts on. We've got reserve signs up here, but I'm just letting you know we're not going to be reserved. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. It's good stuff. Well, my name is Gary Morgan. My wife, Sarah, I come from Wales, like um, they said, and... Uh, I just want to say something before I start. If you don't understand me, then just wave, and I'll wave back. Is that okay? But I'll try, I'll try and speak as clearly as possible. Sometimes people don't understand what I say, but I sort of get into an accent when everyone can. So is everyone doing okay so far? Amen? Well, just before I start, I just got a couple of things. One of the things I really want to do is, is speak to New Zealand, because I really believe whenever... We come into a land, the Bible tells us in Luke to first bless the land, amen? Speak peace. So we speak peace to New Zealand. But one of the things the Lord was showing me as we came into Hamilton, because whenever you, you uh, come to a place, you always address three areas. You address people as individuals, you address the church as a corporate setting, but you also impact and speak to the region, Amen. Because one thing we need to realize is whenever we pray, whenever we speak forth a word, it always impacts them three areas. Amen? So if you ever hear a word that is regional, take it for yourself. Because God always speaks on a three-tier level. He always speaks regionally, He speaks corporately, and He speaks individually. So if the Bible, if the Bible tells me I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out, guess what? Hamilton is blessed going out and it's blessed coming in. Amen? So if someone stands up and says New Zealand is a nation of healing, then I take that for myself because I'm here. You need to realize that you're a nation of healing. Amen? So that doesn't just mean the land. It means the people of the land. Amen? But I really believe, I was looking in, in, Luke, uh, sorry, in, in Genesis 38 this morning, and I really believe this is key for Australia and New Zealand. Now, this is not what I'm going to speak on this morning. This is just prophetically speaking into something which I believe is going to cause a shift. Amen? How many people are ready to see a shift happen in their lives, see a shift happen in their nation? Amen? Because that's what God wants to do. We were just in, uh, in Toronto, and um, I was just having a quiet time with the Lord one day, and the Lord came to me and He said, Gary, I've assigned a new angel to you. And I'm like, Wow. Okay, God, what's his name? Because one of the things that I, I need to tell you, and one thing I learned, is whenever you see something happen in the Bible, whenever there's someone moving into a new season, whenever heaven is coming close to earth, an angel is always present. Agree? You see, when, when the heralding of Jesus' birth was coming, who heralded it? Angels. When Jacob's name was changed, who heralded it? The angel. You see, whenever someone is ready to come into a supernatural shift, an angel will always be present. I guarantee each and every one of you in this place has that angelic activity present when something has happened in your life. 
But the thing is, we, we, we don't readily recognize it. We don't acknowledge it. There's something about charismatic Christianity that is more locked on to demons than there are angels. When the Bible tells us only two-thirds, only, sorry, a third of the, of the angels fell, how many's left? So how many more should we be seeing? We should be seeing more angels than demons. Amen? So God wants to shift us into a place of beginning to re readily recognize that we have angels. So let me get back to my story. I was there and the Lord said, you've got a new angel. And I'm like, okay, God, what's his name? Because whenever an angel is present, two things you need to ask. Who are you and why are you here? Because angels are always sent with assignments. You never see an angel in the Word of God that was sent just to stand there and look pretty. He was always sent with an assignment. So if you ever feel or if you ever sense or if all of a sudden the Lord opens your eyes to the angelic, two questions ask, who are you and why are you here? So I asked the question, being Welsh. I said, well, okay, who are you and why are you here? He said, my name is Shift. And I've come to cause a shift not only in you but in the nations. So we've come here this weekend with shift because I really believe a shift is going to begin to happen not only in your lives but in the lives and in the nation of New Zealand and in the region of Australia. The, is it the Waikato? Waikato, I just love that name. It's got that little ring with this accent. Amen? So I really believe something is going to shift this weekend. Amen? I believe, you know, where people have come with, with health problems, you're going to leave healed. Amen? Where people have come with financial problems, you're going to leave prosperous. Amen? Where people have come because you feel that there's nothing happening, where ministry is just hitting your head against the brick wall, get ready for breakthrough. Get ready for a shift. Amen? Because that's what God is doing. Turn with me to, to Genesis. This is just for New Zealand and for Australia. Genesis 38 verse 27. Now it came to pass at the time for giving birth. Now that's, that's a word. It's time to give birth. It's time that the spiritual abortionists of these nations get put aside, and it's time that the birthings of the Lord begin to happen in the nations. Amen? It's time that the words and the promises that have been conceived through prophetic words, that the times and seasons begin to shift, and we begin to see a time of birthing happen. Amen? That's what we're entering into, guys. You know, it's funny when I come to New Zealand or come to Australia because the seasons are flipped. Because for us, now this is summer in the north. Here is winter. Now, but what always precedes winter? Or precedes, sorry. Spring. Spring is a time of new birth. New growth. Guys, you need to take that because it's interesting in the Word of God. It says that there were sons of Issachar that knew the times and the seasons and what to do. In it. And in the next se session, Sarah is going to be talking on that. But you need to realize, guys that we need to know, that we need to step into, that when these angels come and begin to tell us, when we begin to step into a place of hearing the wind of the Spirit on things, we need to respond. Amen? You see, it's amazing when you begin to see that. Now, it came to pass at the time of giving birth that behold, twins were in their womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that the one put his hand out and a midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it to his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened as he drew back his hand that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, How did you break through? How did you break through? That's a question that is going to be asked to New Zealand. How did you break through? How did you break through? And she said, This breach or this breakthrough be upon you. Therefore, his name was called Perez, or Breakthrough. Afterwards, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Sarah. Let me tell you something, guys. Australia has been in a place of shift. Australia has been in a place of, of this put its hand out for the blessings of the Lord. But I'm telling you something, there's something about New Zealand that is stepping into a place where they're not just going to see the hand, they're going to come and break through, amen? And there's going to be a question that is going to be asked to New Zealand, how did you break through? 
But it's not going to be asked of New Zealand. It's going to be asked of you. How did you get that job? How did you get them grades? How did you get that prosperity? Why? Because I broke through. There's something of Paris. There's something of that breakthrough ability that is going to come upon New Zealand. And it's going to be a question of the nations. How did you break through? How did you break through? Because I really believe God has got us in a place where we need to start stepping into that place of breakthrough. Amen? We need to start realizing, yes, someone has, must, might have gone before us. Someone might have stepped before us. But all of a sudden, I'm stepping through and I'm breaking through. Amen? Because so many of us in this place, you've seen others go before you and you've said, I've given up. I'm not moving on now. He's put his hand through. I can't do anything. Guys, let me tell you something. The baby put its hand through. Its baby put its hand through it, and all of a sudden they put this scarlet thread. But I'm telling you something. There's something amazing about the destiny and the declarations of God upon our life. When you begin to step into that place of saying, I'm not giving up, I'm pressing in, I'm pressing on, and I'm pressing through, nothing is going to hold me back. There needs a tenacity to rise up again in the people of this nation to begin to say, we're not just going to take second seat. We're not just going to take second place. There is something of healing that is going to rise up in this nation. The Bible says that the Son will rise with what? Healing in its wings. What nation on this earth sees the sun first? New Zealand. You see, you see the sun of righteousness. The sun of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. You see, you need to realize your identity as a nation. Your identity is healing. So that's not only identity of a nation, that's an identity of a people. So look at your hands. The Bible says that they shall lay hands on the, and they shall recover. You see, it doesn't say you lay hands on the, on the sick and say a 40 line prayer. It doesn't say you lay hands on the sick and get the intercessors and the worship team to come and, and create an atmosphere. It says you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Just lay hands. You see, we add things to it. We lay our hands and we add the prayer. Jesus, you know, I, I remember the beginning of this year, we, we were in a church in, in uh, New England. And I'm like, God, why, why aren't people getting healed? I'm praying for people and they're not getting healed. And the Lord said, Gary, I don't want you to pray for them. I want you to heal them. You see, what we're doing is we're praying for people, but we ain't healing them. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. You see, we, we've got it. It's our responsibility. One thing I've learned about the Lord is He's a perfect gentleman. He never moves without, outside the parameters of His authority. You see, G Jesus told us to go. He said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Jesus will never move outside the parameters of his authority. You see, when we see someone in front of us who is, who is sick, and we turn around and say, God, heal them. God can't heal them. I'm stretching some brains here. I can hear people going, Phew. You see, God can't heal them. Why? Because he give us the authority. He said, all authority I give to you. is So if he's given all authority, does he have authority? No, he's given it to us. That's why when, when the guy was at the gate, beautiful, and he says, please, please give me arms. And he, that's a joke. He got legs. But, but he said, please give me. He said, and Peter and John said, silver and gold have we none, but such as I have. I give to you. What did he have? He had the authority that Jesus gave him. That's why Jesus will never move outside of his authority. Why? Because he gave it to us. That's why we need to start operating in this authority. When we recognize something, we need to respond to it and say, I'm moving in the authority which was given me. 
And when we lay our hands, guess what, guys? We see people healed. When that revelation went clunk into my heart, we started seeing people healed. We saw people with fibromyalgia. We saw people with, with cysts. We saw people with, with chronic pain. We just saw them healed. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. Heal the sick. Amen? So you just do it. You know, I want to introduce you. How many people know the names of God? Jehovah Nisi. God is my banner. Jehovah Shalom. God is my... Jehovah Rafari. God is my... Okay, let me introduce you to another one. Jehovah Nike. He's the God that just does it. He's the God that just does it. Amen? And we just need to recognize that God is Jehovah Nike. He's the God that just does it. So if He's the God that just does it, guess what we need to do? We need to just do it. Amen? We just need to do it. Because, you see, it's, it's amazing. We all think it's the doing that makes us who we are. It's because I do. It's, it's, it's because of who I am. No, guys. You know, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. It's not, it's not what you do makes you who you are. It's who you are compels you to do what you do. I don't think you heard me there. It's not what you do makes you who you are. Because you, because you pray for people doesn't make you a Christian. Because you heal the sick doesn't make you a healer. You hearing me? It's not what you do makes you who you are. It's who you are compels you to do what you do. It's because he first loved me, I've got to love. Because he first healed me, I've got to heal. Be because he first saved me, I've got to tell a salvation story. Amen? I've, I've got to change. I've got to change because he changed me. Amen? You know, it's amazing. My wife says this, this little line, and I love it. Change only hurts when we resist. Change only hurts when we resist. And you see, when, when God causes a shift, when God cause, causes a breakthrough in our life, when God causes the place that we're at to change, you see, that's what shift does. That's what shift does. Any mother in this place who's given birth knows that when the baby goes from here to here, something hurts. Amen? But you see, it only hurts when we resist. There's something within the body that wants to resist pain. That's why it hurts. Amen? So we need to get into a place of recognizing when, when God wants to cause a shift over our lives, we need to just yield. Amen? It's amazing in America, we call them give way signs in the States. Do you call them give way or do you call them yield? Give way. We call it yield in America. They call it yield signs. It's amazing. That's, every time I see it, God just reminds me, Gary, I want you to yield. Oh, Gary, I want you to give way because the blessing's coming through. Gary, I want you to give way because what I'm about to do in your life is happening. But if you don't give way to it, it's just going to collide. Amen? And God wants us to give way. God wants us to yield. It's amazing. If we yield, we'll be healed. Amen? Turn with me to, to Matthew 9. I believe God is doing a breakthrough here this morning. Shamba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Matthew. I bought this, uh, this Bible in Swansea Market. That's why it's like that. <laughs> I remember buying a Bible once. Swansea is a little town near where I live, or I used to live. And I remember buying a Bible once, and uh, I brought it home, and it was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Psalms, Joshua, Judges, James. And I'm like, is this a new version? And it's just been bound wrong, but I, luckily I took it back because it would have been a confused gospel. It came Matthew 9, verse 18. While he spoke... 
things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, everyone say suddenly. suddenly. One of my favorite words in the Bible, suddenly. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the daughter and the woman was made well from that hour. You see, if we look in this passage... I want to glean some things from this, which I really believe is going to be key for you seeing breakthrough in your life. Amen? There's key things within this passage that if if we can recognize, if we can cultivate within our lives, then we're going to see breakthrough on a daily basis. Amen? You see, it's amazing. It says, while he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him. And it says, and suddenly a woman. Now it doesn't say a name. It doesn't even tell us where she's from. But it says a woman came and touched the hem of his garment because she had a flow of blood for what? Twelve years. You see, this woman, probably in them twelve years, went the length and breadth. It tells us in another gospel that she went to so many physicians, that she spent so much money, that she went here, she went there, she went everywhere, just to try and find a breakthrough. You see, Jesus was a last resort. Friend, never let Jesus be a last resort. You see, the worst thing we do is, is go for the medicine cupboard before we go to prayer. We go for the aspirin or we go for the Panadol before we go to prayer. You know, it's amazing. Last night, we, we, went, we went out just for a meal and all of a sudden this headache came upon me. Just, just this, this pain in my head. So all of a sudden, I was thinking, oh, I'll just take some Panadol. Then the, the Spirit of God quickened to me. Gary, open your eyes and see what it is. And I recognized that there were principalities and there was, there was powers within this region because I've never been here before. So all of a sudden, there's a new boy in town. All of a sudden, they're like, we don't like this one. So I felt all manner of stuff coming against me. So I just went to the bathroom. And as I'm in the bathroom, all of a sudden, the Lord quickened to me. And I said, every curse, every assignment of the enemy cease in Jesus Christ's name. The headache just left. You see, what would have happened? I would have just taken some pills, but what would that have done? It would have suppressed the spiritual ability to begin to see, because that's what it does. And I would have thought it was just natural instead of spiritual. You know, we need to readily recognize when these things happen in our lives. And it's the same with this woman. She, she probably went the length and breadth. I don't know how much money she spent just to see a breakthrough. Just to see a breakthrough. You see, friend, you you could have spent money upon money upon dollar upon dollar upon dollar going to this conference, going to that conference. And guys, I'm not against conferences. But I'm looking for the day where we begin to see breakthrough in our households that overspill into the church. Amen? Not the breakthrough in the church overspilling into our houses. I want to begin to see a body released that are, that are seeing the breakthrough of the Lord, beginning to see the kingdom of God manifested on a daily basis that overspills into the church, that on a Sunday the pastor can't but give the mic because people just want to testify. Amen? Because what God has done Tuesday, what God did Wednesday... Amen. It's, it's time we begin to see the breakthrough of the Lord in our lives. That we begin to step into that place of knowing, listen, I don't need to go to this place. I don't need to go to that place. I just need to know that if I stand, if I position myself for breakthrough. You see, it, it, we need to begin to position ourselves, guys. And I believe that's, that's where God is bringing us into as we begin to position ourselves for purpose. Let me say that again. We need to position ourselves for purpose. So many of us are positioning ourselves for failure instead of positioning ourselves for purpose. You see, if you position yourself for purpose, something will flow. 
How many of you watered the garden? And all of a sudden, you attach the, you attach the hose. And you turn it on, and you go to the other end, and you, you turn it on, and nothing comes out. And you think, what's happened? And you go back, and you, re- re- shamba. you realize that the hose has now just come off the tap. Why? Because you didn't position it properly. You see, if, if we don't position ourselves properly to the kingdom, when the power flows, we just get thrown off. When the kingdom of darkness wants to come against us, we just get thrown off. But if we position ourselves with purpose, you see this woman positioned herself with purpose. She just didn't sit there and say, oh, I hope someone comes past. We need to realize something, that this woman was in a dangerous position. She was unclean. She shouldn't even been in the parameters of the city. But she went against all odds. She went against everything that everything that was against her, she stepped into and said, I'm coming against it. You see, she went on the offense instead of the defense. How many of us are living in a defensive Christianity? Most of us are living in a defensive Christianity. You know, we apologize for this. We apologize. You know, it's amazing. Whenever whenever something's going to happen, we always have to explain it first. Jesus never did that. Jesus just did it. If they questioned, then go and see the disciples. You see, never did Jesus live a defensive life. He always lived an offensive life. You see, the cross is offensive. The supernatural is offensive. Even to us, it's offensive because the Bible says that that it offends the mind. It wars against the flesh. You know, it's, it's amazing how many of you I've asked someone for a cup of tea and they've said no. Put your hands up. You said, do you want a cup of tea? And they've said no. Now, do you go into three weeks of counseling because they said no? <laughs> but it's amazing how many Christians, when, you ask, when they ask someone do they want prayer and someone says no, that they go into three weeks of counseling. You're in work and, and someone's ill, so you say, can I pray for you? No. Oh, I better go see the pastor. I need need three weeks of counseling for this. I can't believe they just said no. But when you ask them for it, they want a cup of tea and they say no, does that affect you? It means they don't want a cup of tea. When they don't want prayer, it says they don't want a breakthrough. Now, is that your problem or theirs? It's theirs. You know, it's amazing if we begin to realize that we can just be supernaturally natural in our workplaces, in our schools, in our colleges, life is going to be a lot easier. We just need to position ourselves to purpose. You know, it's amazing. The Bible says to lay hands. Is that what it says? You know, when someone comes up to you and says, oh, I just got this massive headache. You can just put your hand on their shoulder and say it's going to be okay. What have I just done? I've just laid hands. Five minutes later, they come back. Whoa, this headache's gone. Let me tell you about Jesus. You see, it's amazing. If you just begin to live a natural Christianity, it becomes supernatural. When we do our bit, God does his bit. You see, it's, I, I see God as the most secure person that I know because he never gets up in the morning and wants to be Gary Morgan. But sometimes Gary Morgan gets up in the morning and tries to be God. But it's so amazing. If you begin to do your job, he'll do his. That's what commissioning is all about. God, if I do my bit... You'll do yours. He said, just preach, the, just preach the word. What does he follow with? Signs and wonders. But the amazing thing is we try to preach the word and we try to do the signs and wonders as well. That's why we just need to just let go and let God. Because God is so amazing in that. That if we begin to position ourselves, we'll begin to see breakthrough. We'll begin to see overcoming, we'll begin to see something shift over our lives and we'll think, I never thought this way before. I call it stinking thinking. If you ever think something that is contrary or opposite to the breakthrough that God has spoken over your life, just check it out. Because it's stinking thinking. We don't need stinking thinking. We need the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. And you see, this woman knew what she needed to do. She'd be in the length of breath. She went to Dr. Phil. She probably went to Oprah. 
But you see, we don't need to go to them places. We just need to go to Jesus. And you see, it's amazing. This, this weekend is called Encountering the Prophetic. You know, it's amazing. We need, we need to start encountering more the, of God than experiencing Him. You see, this woman was after an encounter. She wasn't after an experience. Let me explain to you what the difference is. An experience is like going to Wellington Zoo and seeing the nice elephant behind the fence. That's an experience. The encounter comes is when you're in Kenya in a Land Rover and you've got five bull elephants charging your Land Rover. That's an encounter. You see, most of us have experienced God. We haven't encountered Him. And God wants us to live a life of encounter. You see, that's what this woman was after. She just didn't want an experience. She didn't just want a five-minute chat. You see, she didn't phone the disciples for an appointment. She had to break through. She had to have an encounter with the power. She had to have an encounter with the power. There was no other, there was no other option. The only option was... She had to have an encounter. But you know at that point when she just reached out, you say it says that she reached out and touched the hem of his garment. Do you know what a hem is? That's what a hem is. On the end of my shirt. Do you know we're that far away from a miracle? Do you know we're just a hem away from breakthrough? Sometimes I'm just, I sit there sometimes and just look at, my, at the hem. And I think, God, I'm just that far away from a breakthrough. Can I say something to you? You're just a hem away from a breakthrough. You're just a hem away from a breakthrough. You're just a hem away from seeing the tangible. You see, it's, it's, it's time that God gets tangible in our lives. That's what needed to happen to this. She had to touch. She had to handle. She had to feel. She had to grab hold of. You see, it's time we get tangible with God. I, I, I want to move from the superficial to the supernatural. You know, I, I, I want to move from that which I think to that which I know. I don't just want to think it. I want to know it. And I believe it's time we, we begin to move into that. That we, we don't just want to just hold on to what we know. We want to hold on to Him. You see, I, I don't want to hold on to doctrine. I, I don't want to hold on to belief. I want to hold on to Jesus. I want to hold on to the supernatural. I want to know that when I get up in the morning, the Lord is there to greet me. I want to know that, that He's just a, a, a voice, just, just a question, just a, a sentence away. Father, where are you? I want to get into a place well, I'm not going to be held by rules and regulations. I'm not going to be held by religion. You see, I'm not going to be held in a place which says to me, I cannot attain. You see, that's what Luther had to break through. The just shall live by faith. But the priest kept on saying, only we can get to God. You have to come through us. You see, and he had to get through that to realize the just shall live by faith. We have direct access to God. But I'm telling you, we're going backwards, guys. Because we move into this place where we think we have to trust in someone else to get our breakthrough for us. When God is saying the breakthrough is yours, you just need to speak it into existence. You just need to speak it into existence. Let me tell you something. That's what this woman did. She prophesied her breakthrough. What was prophecy? Speaking of the oracles, speaking the, the things of God, speaking the promises of God, speaking the, 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 the blessings of God, speaking the breakthrough of God, speaking the plans of God, that which is coming. Amen? Is that what prophecy is? That which is coming. You see, she prophesied her breakthrough. Verse 21, she said to herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment. What did she do? She touched the hem of his garment, and what happened to her? She was healed. Why? Because she prophesied it. Guys, it's time we begin to prophesy our breakthrough. It's time that we start sitting there and begin to speak. Instead of waiting for a word, it's time we give a word. 
Amen? Instead of waiting for this word to come out of nowhere, God's going to do this. It's time that we start speaking it forth, just like this woman did. This woman said, I will touch the hem of his garment and I will be made well. It's time that we start prophesying. I will put that application in and I will get a job. Amen? Because breakthrough comes. I I will speak to my family and they will be saved. I I will go to the doctor and he will tell me I am well. That's what prophecy is. That's what this woman did. She prophesied. She spoke. She created breakthrough in her life. I don't think you're hearing me. It's time we get hold of God. It's time that we get hold of the authority that he's given us and begin to speak breakthrough in our life. Just like this woman did. I'm going to touch his hem and I'm going to be made well. She laid hold of that beggar, and she was healed. Guys, if we want to encounter the prophetic, we need to start prophesying. We need to get out of this thing, I want a word. We need to start giving a word, amen? We need to start prophesying over our lives. We need to start speaking them things that are not as though they are. My wife's not saved. She will be saved because I'm going to speak to her. My company is going into bankruptcy. No, it's not because I'm here in Jesus' name. The business that I work for is going to prosper because I am here in Jesus' name. You see, we begin to speak the word. You see, did all of a sudden she get a download from heaven? Did the Lord speak to her? Woman of Samaria, I want you to say this. No. You see, God... If we have the authority, we have the ability to speak. That's why Paul warns us what to, what to speak with our mouth. Because in the tongue there is life and death. Amen? And we get into this thing, oh, we've got to hear the Lord. We've got to hear the Lord. Yes, there's times where we need to hear the Lord. But like, like Ezekiel, he says, son of man, what do you see? And he copped out. Oh, God, who you know? What a coward. The guy had the opportunity to speak forth. You know, he could not only have seen an army, he could have spoken other things. He had the ability, he had bones in front of him. The Ezekiel had the ability to speak creative words into that valley. You know, my, we might not have only seen if all of a sudden he jumped into that place of saying, Lord, I see. Because I'm telling you guys, if you see, he sends. If you see, he sends. And guys, I see New Zealand filled with the glory of the Lord. Every time I come into this nation, I say, New Zealand, you will see the glory of the Lord rise upon you. You will see the nations healed through you. You will be the head and not the tail. Amen? Because let me tell you guys, New Zealand is not the tail of Australia. New Zealand is not. It's a nation. It's the head. Australia and New Zealand are the head. Amen? They are the head and not the tail. And that's what God is doing. If you see it, then say it. But we get into this false humility. Am I speaking to someone? We, we get into this false humility. Oh, well, I can't think that about myself. That's just pride. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because David stood before the giant and said, your head is coming off. And all his brothers could have turned around. He's a bit prideful. Look at him. He's only a little skinny runt. He hasn't even got any armor on. And he's turning around and telling this giant that his head is coming off. No, he didn't tell him. He prophesied it. Your head is coming off. Let me tell you, you need to start speaking. You need to start prophesying to your sickness. Your head is coming off. You need to start prophesying to your situation, your circumstance that your head is coming off. Amen? Because long, long gone, guys, it's time that our destiny starts dictating our circumstance, not our circumstance dictates our destiny. That's what's happened for so long. Our circumstance has been dictating our destiny. I can't go because I'm broke. I can't do it because I'm a woman. They won't listen to me because I'm Welsh. I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too thin, I'm too fat. I've got the right complexion. I can't speak like they can. 
You see, we, we get into the, all these different things of can't, can't, God. Guys, can't doesn't exist in the kingdom of God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Bondage doesn't exist within the kingdom of God. You see, them thoughts and them declarations are bondage. They're not truth. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You can open a business. You can be prosperous. You can do all things through Christ. But you see, what has happened is, is this humanistic Philippians 4.13 has come into the church. I can do all things, period. I can do all things, full stop. That's that humanistic Philippians 4.13. I can do all things. No, you can't. Through Christ, I can do all things. But you know what's amazing? A couple of years ago, the Lord said this to me. I was just quoting this verse one day to, to a group. And I said, you see, it says in Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord said, Gary, I can do all things through you. If you can do all things through me, then I can do all things through you. You need to get that. If I can do all things through Christ, then guess what? Christ can do all things through me. Whew. Whew. Wow. Shaba. You see, she, she prophesied. And then Jesus turned around and said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Your faith. You see, now what's faith? The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance. You know, I like to say it like this. Faith is like hair product. Faith is like hair product. You see, I didn't naturally get up this morning and my hair's like this. You know, some of you women didn't get up this morning and all of a sudden your hair is like it is. You wish it was. And there's some guys you wish you had hair product. But you see, my hair doesn't naturally do this. I put something in there. I put a substance in it called hair product or wax. And you see, the hair product causes my hair to do things that it can't naturally do. My hair can't naturally stand on end. You see, that's what faith is. Faith is like hair product. Faith causes you to do things that you can't naturally do. Can you naturally heal the sick? But by faith you can. Can you naturally raise the dead? No, but by faith you can. That's why faith is like hair product. It causes you to do them things that you can't naturally do. Amen? So whenever you see something that you know you can't do naturally, you just say, God, I'm putting on some faith. I'm putting on some faith because I'm about to do something that I can't naturally do. You see, that's what made this woman well. By touching a piece of garment, she was made well. What, what was the make? Was it Amani? Was it D&G? You know, what, what was Jesus wearing? You know, it's, it's amazing that God can bless us at the point of our faith. You see, that's what faith does. It bridges the supernatural with the natural. It bridges the supernatural with the natural. It takes what I have and what he has and causes something. Amen? It's amazing if you begin to look at that. You see, it wasn't what Jesus had, had on. It's what he put on. You see, Jesus wasn't wearing just a garment. Jesus was wearing miracles. Jesus was wearing breakthrough. Jesus was wearing. You see, the question the Lord asked me a couple of weeks ago when I got up, he said, Gary, what are you wearing today? And I'm like, whoa, the Holy Spirit's going to be my wardrobe. Uh, man, I'm like... I missed it because what he was trying to say to me is, Gary, what are you going to put on today? Are you going to put on shame? Are you going to put on doubt? Are you going to put on unbelief? Are you going to put on depression? Are you going to put on sickness or are you going to put on breakthrough? Are you going to put on miracles? Are you going to put on signs and wonders? Are you going to put on my presence? Are you going to be clothed with righteousness? Amen? Because 
the Bible told, t- tells me. I made an exchange 14 years ago. I took off my rags and I put on his riches. <laughs> Amen? I, I took off. I took off my morning and I put on dancing. But every morning it's a battle. You see, the biggest battle we, we battle is the battle of unbelief and faith. It's the battle of unbelief and faith. Do we get up in the morning and put on unbelief or do we put on faith? It's amazing, a friend of mine one one day, he was sitting in his office and he felt Jesus walk in his office. And it's just this amazing smell came into his office. And he just asked the question, Jesus, what are you wearing? Because this this amazing smell. And Jesus turned to him and said, I've got peace and prosperity on what have you got? You see, the Bible says we are a fragrance to this world. What are we, what are we putting on? What people smelling? Are they smelling fear? Are, are, are they smelling doubt? Are they smelling corruption? Are, are they smelling defeat? Or are they smelling breakthrough? Are they smelling love? Are they smelling the kingdom? Amen? Because that's exactly what Jesus... I, I, I don't believe... I don't believe... It was what Jesus was wearing. It's what Jesus put on. She, she looked at that garment. She looked at the hem. I, I don't believe it was just a hem. I believe she saw miracles. I believe she saw a residue of the kingdom. I believe she saw a residue of the Father. Because every time Jesus went out, he went out from a place of soaking in the presence. He went from a place of spending time with the Father. You see, if you ever want to be powerful if you ever want to be in a place of beginning to see miracles signs and wonders it all comes from that place of being with father and that's what she, that's what this woman saw i believe she saw a residue of the father i believe she saw a residue of the kingdom upon him and saw that's what i need and i believe if we spend that time in that place I believe as we walk into Pack and Save or we walk into Woolworths or we walk into our, into our work, people are going to come up to us and say, what have you got? What are you wearing? You smell like love. You smell like freedom. You sm- smell like security. You smell safe. And you see, they'll want to get around us. And you just tell them. It's just Jesus. You know, if we begin just to live naturally, supernatural, guys, we're going to see a breakthrough. But you know what? It's amazing about this. We get into this small people mentality. Like I said, we, as New Zealanders, and it's the same with the Welsh, we get into this little nation syndrome. We're just small. We're just insignificant. God's going to do nothing through us. You know, we get into this, this mentality. And you know, I'm amazed by this woman. Because if we read the beginning in verse 18, it's, it shows us that Jesus was on another assignment. Where was he going? He was going to raise Jairus' daughter. He was on another assignment. But even though Jesus was on another assignment, the woman chose to broke, broke, break through. You see, you may be sitting in Hamilton and saying, God's going to Auckland. Jesus is on his way to Auckland. Let me tell you, Hamilton, break through. You may feel that Jesus is going somewhere else. He's in Australia or he's going to Palmerston North. Amen? Or he's going somewhere else. But you can say, God, I'm breaking through. You may be on another assignment. Like Jesus was on another assignment. But that didn't matter to the woman. She just knew she had to break through. You see, you may feel that God is blessing your neighbor. You may feel that God is blessing somebody else. Just break through. And stand back and say they're getting blessed. You go for the blessing. Amen? Because I'm telling you guys, you go for the promise more than you go for the blessing. Let me tell you, God said to me a couple of months ago, guys, he said, Gary, people want to park in blessing instead of of journeying in promise. People will rather park in blessing than journey in promise. Guys, I'd rather journey in promise. 
Because I know as I journey and promise, blessing is just going to overtake me. I just don't want to park. I just don't want to sit where God last visited me. I want to go to the next place. Amen? And guys, I believe, I, I don't mind where God's going. I don't mind what God's doing. I don't care if he's blessing other people. I know that I can go for the breakthrough. I know a precedent has been set that I can go for the breakthrough. People might not know my name like they didn't know this woman's name. People may not know where I'm from. I don't care. I'm going for the breakthrough. And that's what we need to set, set. That's what we need to journey in. That's what we need to stand in and knowing that God has got us in the breakthrough. Amen? Jesus may be on another assignment. Whew. Wow. But I'm telling you, a precedent is being set. A precedent is being set. If only I may touch. She released a prophetic word that caused a breakthrough. Hamilton, are you ready to release a prophetic word that's going to cause a breakthrough? But we need to realize something, guys. Whenever God breaks through in our lives, this is the beauty. This is the beauty of God. Whenever God breaks through in our lives, He doesn't just break through for us. It is so much bigger than we expect. We think, whoa, God healed me. God blessed me. And we think it's all for us. But let me tell you something, guys. A precedent was set in the Bible. If you turn with me to, to Matthew 14. Five chapters later. Matthew 14. I'm going to take a little break with this water. I'm nearly done. Amen. How many people are ready for breakthrough? You see, Matthew 14, verse 34. Now, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gesenerat. And when the men of that place recognized him, being Jesus, the men of that place uh, sent out into all the surrounding region and brought him all who were sick. And they begged him and they, that they might only touch what? The hem of his garment. That they may only touch the hem of of his garment. And they begged him that they may only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made perfectly well. Why did they only want to touch the hem of his garment? Because they heard what happened to the lady in, in Matthew 9. Word had got out. See, they didn't want an audience. They didn't want a, a crusade. They didn't, want, they didn't want a special meeting with Jesus. That's all they asked for is that we can touch the hem of his garment. Because testimony had got through to Gesenerat. The Bible tells us in Revelation 12 verse 11 that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen? That we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word. You see, the testimony, the testimony, the testimony of this woman had got to Gesenerat. What was the testimony? That I touched the hem of his garment and I was made perfectly well. You see, you can imagine these guys in, in Gesenerat. I, I always picture it like a valley scene in Wales. All of a sudden, they're all standing around and they're having a chat. You wouldn't have believed it. You just, we had this guy here down in Jerusalem. I couldn't believe it. Gospel truth, couldn't believe it. We're, 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 in, this, we're in this crowd and uh, we're all trying to touch him. And all of a sudden, this, this woman came out of nowhere. Gospel truth. And she touched the hem of his garment. No way. Really? Yes, you should have been there. There were thousands. You know, it's amazing whenever you tell a story in Wales, it's always hundreds that turn into thousands. There were thousands. I couldn't believe it. This woman came around. It was like John Alumu going for a try. She just jumped through. And she touched. What happened? Well, you wouldn't have believed it if you were there. All of a sudden, she got up and she was perfectly well. No. Never. On my mother's life. I was there. It's like Max Boyce. I was there. You know, it's you know, some of you might not get this, but I just, it reminds me of home. But it's amazing. 
how all of a sudden these men of Gesenerat could have been there and they were like, there he is. That's the guy. That's the guy whose hem was touched. Quick, go and get everyone that we know is sick and we're going to ask him, can we touch the hem of his garment? Because that we heard, we saw, we saw with our eyes that someone who touched his garment was healed. Let me tell you something, guys. God is going to break through in your life today. And a testimony of that is going to be heard. Might be by someone in Auckland. Might be someone in Gibson. And they're going to hear, well, on that day, when they prayed, they had breakthrough. If it can happen for them, it can happen for me. You see, that's what happened with these guys. If she can touch the hem and be healed, guess what? Hamilton, are you going to receive your breakthrough so New Zealand can receive its breakthrough? <sighs> are you going to receive your breakthrough so your family can receive your breakthrough? Are you going to receive your breakthrough so that the nations can receive their breakthrough? You see, if this woman had just said, forget it, I'm too sick, I I'm too an outcast, people don't love me, people don't like me, I I'm not going to break through, what would have happened to these people in Gesenerat? they wouldn't have been healed. Let me tell you something, friend. If you lay hold of a breakthrough, you're not just going to break through for yourself. You're going to break through for a nation. You're not just going to break through for yourself. You're going to break through for the nations. Amen? And that's what God is doing. That's why God has positioned us here is because I believe, you see, a Welshman doesn't come all this way just to speak a fancy message. Welshman doesn't come all this way to tickle your ears, guys. I'm here to declare a shift in your life. I'm here to declare a breakthrough in your life that we begin to see people move from here to here in the glory of God. Amen? You see, the Bible says we move from glory to glory. So many of us are stuck in the two. We're moving from glory to glory, but we're stuck in the two. We're neither in that glory or we're not in this glory. We're in the two. And that's why we've come here is to shift you. Amen? To cause a shift to happen in your life that's going to bring you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, because that's where God wants us. Amen? And I believe, guys, over these next th three sessions, over these next two days, we're not only going to see a sowing. We're not going to only see a, a harvest, and we're going to see a breakthrough. See, one of the things we, I need to speak over you guys and over this nation is Jesus never sowed. He only harvested. Wherever he went, he healed the sick. Wherever he went, he cast out demons. Wherever he went... He harvested. And this is what the Lord said to me coming into New Zealand. Sowing and plowing is no longer an option, only harvesting. And I'm telling you guys, sowing and plowing is no longer an option. I'm not going into a nation to plow. I'm not going into a region to plow. I'm going into a region to harvest. Amen? And I'm, I want to declare that sowing and plowing is no longer an option with God, only harvesting, because we're in the last days. And he said, look, the fields are white under harvest. It's not white under plowing. It's not white under sowing. It's white under harvest. And that's for your life as well. Quit plowing in your life. Begin, begin to start harvesting in your life. Amen? Begin to start. Quit. Quit plowing. Quit plowing. Because it's time we start harvesting. Amen? And you know what's amazing? Do you know when you harvest, you sow the same time? Do you recognize that? Because as, as, you, as you pull up, it's amazing in, in harvesting. When you pull up the crop, what falls off? You see, God always lives in the overflow. So when you begin to harvest, you sow in. That's why it says in the Bible that, that, that the reaper will overtake the sower and the sower will overtake the reaper. Because as you reap, you're going to sow anyway. Amen? And that's what needs to happen because as you begin to reap, guys, you sow. Guess who's going to reap next? Someone who's going to come after you. And I refuse. God, God specifically showed me regions of the nations that are ripe for harvest. That if someone goes in there to plow, they're going to wreck it. 
And that's why we need to start hearing the Lord. That's why we need, need to start moving with the Lord. That if we go into a region and try and plow in when it's time for harvesting, we're going to wreck it. And that's why we need to start stepping into that place and beginning to listen to the Lord. You see, you need to recognize that the workplaces are a harvest ground. Schools are a harvest ground. Colleges are a harvest ground. Churches are not harvest grounds. <laughs> Amen. We think that this is, a har- this is not a harvest ground. This thing is a barn. Amen. This is not a field. This is a barn. There's the field. That's why people get hurt in churches because people come in with their big combine harvesters and they hurt people. Church is not a place for harvesting. The nations are a place for harvesting. Hamilton is a place for harvesting. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So how many people are ready to see breakthrough? How many people are stand in this place? If you can stand and stand. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, right now in Jesus, I just want you to lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Shabbat. Father, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare a shift in this place. Father, I speak a shift in this place. I, I declare, Lord God, a shift over every person in this place. Lord, I say, debt, go in Jesus Christ's name. Sickness, go in Jesus Christ's name. Father, right now, Lord, I speak. Lord, I speak to arthritis and I say, go in Jesus Christ's name. Father, I speak to diabetes in this place and I say, go in Jesus Christ's name. Father, I speak to eye complaints and I say, go in Jesus Christ's name. Wow. Father, I speak to bowel syndromes. Father, I speak to bowel complaints and I say, go in Jesus Christ's name. Digestion problems, go in Jesus Christ's name. Hormonal problems, go in Jesus Christ's name. Unemployment, go in Jesus Christ's name. Father, I release favor upon everyone. Lord God, I say favor. God, we release favor in this place. Lord, we connect our faith, Lord, our faith with favor and we say breakthrough. In Jesus Christ's name. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Father, I speak to back problems and back trauma caused by accidents to go in Jesus Christ's name. Pain lift. Pain be uprooted in Jesus Christ's name. God, I speak to infertility in this place. Lord, I speak fertility. Lord, I speak fruitfulness in this place. In Jesus Christ's name. Wow. Lord, I speak to, to hurt that's been caused through separation and divorce. Lord God, the, the tanglings and, and Lord God, the bondages of that, I say be broken in Jesus Christ's name. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Heart complaints. Guys, if you're feeling something, what will generally happen right now? If you're yawning, that's just deliverance. That's okay. God's just delivering you from some things. If you're feeling an immense heat, that's just the Spirit of God beginning to burn some things in your life. Shamba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for your presence. Mm. Father God, blinkers. Lord God, spiritual blinkers that have been put on people. Lord God, that is causing them to be blind to the Spirit. I take off right now. If that's you, just put your hands on your eyes and just lift something off. If you feel, if you feel that you're blind to the Spirit, then just lift it off in Jesus Christ's name. Father, I thank you for that. Wow. God, you said the blind will see. So, Lord, we will see in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. God, delay. Father, I deal with ungodly delay in this place right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, if there's been ungodly delays, I break it off in Jesus Christ's name. Whoa, financial curses be lifted in Jesus Christ's name. 
Lord God, generational curses be lifted off in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, we're not going to live under that. <sighs> Lord God, national curses. Father God, identity. Whoa, Shamba. Father God, Lord, identity issues. Lord, we just break off in Jesus Christ's name. So Lord, now we've taken that off. Right now, Father, we put on blessing. <sighs> Whoa, we put on blessing. God, we put on breakthrough. Wow. God, we put on prosperity. God, and that's not just finance. Lord, as, as Paul said, we will prosper, Lord God, in all things, even as our souls prosper. So, Lord, we put on that prosperity. Lord, we put on healing. Wow. God, we put on glory. Father, we put on your presence. God, we put on signs and wonders. Lord God, signs to make people wonder. Signs that point to you. God, we put that on right now in Jesus' name. Shaba Rebe Sutoroba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now. I don't know if this is someone in here, but I'm I'm just seeing. Wow. Someone connected with, with farming. That there's what I'm seeing is God's gonna give you favor to do with land dispute. Shamba, something to do with your land and, and the next place you're moving into or the next place you, you're going into. If that's you, then just raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I just declare favor. <sighs> God, I declare a shift. Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I declare, Father God, that you would just bring, Lord God, a shift. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, would you, if there's anyone else, just raise your hand. Father, right now, God, we just declare land disputes. Lord God, dispute no longer in Jesus' name. Father, we just release favor and, Lord, the ability for breakthrough. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I declare rates to go down. Father, I declare, Lord, rates to drop in Jesus' name. Father, this whole God problem with, wow, Lord God, with inflation, and Lord God, with, with rates, I declare shifted in Jesus' name, in Jesus Christ's name. No longer is the government going to dictate our destiny, but our destiny is going to dictate to the government, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Shamba, Shamba, I just got another word for, for Steve and Julie. Um, I just heard the Lord saying that you were sent you with an assignment that was natural. You were sent you with an appointment that was natural, but the Lord says he hasn't forgotten the kingdom appointment that he sent you here for too. And God says the promises and the words that were given to you and the things that you had even back in the 80s, the, there was some breakthrough that you had in the 80s going into the 90s. And the Lord says that is not finished, but what the Lord has done as, as transacted or transferred the, the, the breakthroughs, has transferred the promise. And the Lord says now it's time to transact. God says the transfer has happened. Now it's time to make a transaction on the transfer. And I hear the Lord saying, especially for you, Julie, that 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 mothering, uh, anointing, that that ability to just gather um, the younger generation has has not been left in Wales. But the Lord says He's going to begin to rise up that that knowledge and that confidence in you again. And the Lord says you are, will find your feet. The Lord says it's it's been gravel the last past couple of years, but the Lord says now. It's concrete. And the Lord says, concrete vision is coming to you. And I heard the Lord beginning to say that even in the next 18 months, there will cause a shift in your life that's, that may bring you into a, a new time and a new place, says the Lord. And God says, New Zealand is your home, but also recognize that God says there is a, a bridge that is caused that what you came over on, you will go back to in, in a time, says the Lord. But know this, that it is for a season and a time. And I really felt the Lord wanted to encourage you I really felt that there's going to be new avenues open to you that's going to cause you to begin to see the bigger picture of why you came. And I really felt, especially for you guys as a couple, I really felt there's a bigger picture. And what I saw the Lord saying was, you're going from a little 15-inch, he says, you're going to widescreen. And God says, he's, he's, he's increasing the vision. And the Lord says, he's given you that, that HD, high definition ability to begin to see vision. And God says, you're not just going to sit in a room with this little 15 inch anymore, but the Lord says he's, he's increasing your vision in Jesus' name. Did you have something, baby? Oh, bless the Lord. Shamba. 
Thank you, Lord. For, th for this body, I really feel what the Lord is saying, that um, he's, he's taken off the veil. And the Lord's saying, you will be a seen body, says the Lord. And God's saying he's beginning to take away that, that veiling that has been happening. And God says, you, you're going to begin to be seen. And I really felt the Lord giving you a nine-month window where you're going to start to implement some things that are really going to cause a, a, a change and a shift within this region. But the Lord says, know this, that the harvest is truly plentiful. And know this, that Hamilton is not going to hold the harvest. But the Lord says he's going to enable you and give you foresight and insight of places in uh, New Zealand where the Lord will have you in a place of harvest. And God says, don't limit yourself just to one area, but the Lord says he's going to give you apostolic favor in other areas and in other places. And God's going to begin to take that which you have thought was small, and he's going to give you the ability to see which is so big. And I felt the Lord, and this is for everyone, I feel the Lord is saying, increase your vision. Start having God vision. Whew. Shamba, Shamba, Rende. So, Father, we thank you for that. What I want you to do right now, this is something the Lord showed me through my mother. And whenever we used to go to someone else's house, my mother always used to like the bushes or the plants. And she's like, I wish I had that in my house. Well, a year later, we did. Why? Because she took a cut in. And what I want you to do right now, I just want you to raise your hands. There's a breakthrough anointing here. There is an atmosphere of breakthrough here. There's breakthrough that you've received today. And what I want you to do is take a cutting of that. And I want you to take it to your homes. I want you to take it to your churches. I want you to take it to your, your, your offices, your college, your schools. And I want you to cultivate the very breakthrough that's here there. So that the same breakthrough that you had this morning, you're going to have there in Jesus Christ's name. So say, Father, we take a cutting. Of this atmosphere, that the breakthrough we received here, we're going to get in our schools, in our colleges, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our churches, and in our region. In Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen.